Greetings once again, my friends, and welcome back to another episode of Geek News Marathon Night, where we take on a chunk of episodes of a given older series, and we go through them episode by episode and give our thoughts. I am your host, Adam Mickelson, a.k.a. Drac. I hope everybody's having an awesome day or night when you're listening to this. And joining me once again is my lovely wife, Andrea. Andrea, I don't know if you realize this, but we are well over half of our way through season one of Beyblade. And it almost feels like it's just getting started in mm-hmm. a weird way. Because last time we discussed the the Dark Bladers, where we had some weird Yu-Gi-Oh crossover with Beyblade, even though Yu-Gi-Oh wasn't a thing yet, Andrea. It wasn't even a thing, and they already crossed it over. Holy crap. Nope, today we're going to be taking on episodes 33 through 36 and continuing on in the Blade Breakers trek through Europe. And of course, they have the Dark Bladers on their tails, so who knows what's actually going to happen. But let's go ahead and start things off with episode 33, Last Tangle in Paris. So we already have kind of our battle plan where the Blade Breakers are going to trek through Europe in order to get to Russia where the, the next tournament is. But they've been having a bit of an issue when it comes to the Dark Bladers. They are... Uh, blade. Uh, I was about to say Blade Breakers. No, they're, they're former. They're, they're the secondary team of the Blade Breakers now. I don't know if you realize that. <clears throat> and I also apologize for our voices. We, jeez, oh, we have been dealing with cold after cold after cold this year. So uh, if we sound a little weird, that's why. But now that they're, uh, we we've had our last encounter with the Dark Bladers. Uh, this is apparently an episode where. Kenny needs to make up for the fact that he was afraid of horror movies. I I don't know why, but that's like the whole premise of this thing is that Kenny needs to overcome his fear of the dark bladers. And so uh, basically while the blade breakers are touring through France in order to be able to get ready uh, and trek through Europe to make it to the Russian tournament, we have our next encounter with the dark bladers, which of course does not involve Kai because Kai cannot be, uh, he, he apparently he loses like street cred when he's around Tyson Ray and Max his teammates. And so instead he decides to go out and have some illegitimate street blading matches. If you will, uh, he took it to the streets is what I'm saying. Andrea. he took it to the streets and because the other four are, I have to count it out in my head. Yeah, the other four are out uh, sightseeing. They run into the the Dark Bladers again, of course, whose goal is to capture the bit beasts of all three of our Blade Breaker friends. So Dragoon, Drigger, and Drasil. And they, it, we, we once again have one of those fights where they kind of win, they kind of don't. It's, it's really close. And of course, Kai comes in and he evens the playing field a little bit. But more importantly, what happens in this one is Kenny overcomes his fear of the Dark Bladers and is able to properly give them a strategy, so to speak. But the more important thing that happens out of this is that we actually learn why the Dark Bladers have decided to take on or to take Bit Beasts. So each one of them has taken on a particularly powerful European Beyblader and <coughs> have, uh, for, for lack of a better term, had their asses hand to them, handed to them. And so we actually get to see all of these four Dark Bladers get their butts handed to them by very familiar faces. Uh, for example, the, oh crap, what is his name? The, the, the UK one that we saw that has uh, Grifolian. Um, oh, geez. Robert? Robert, thank you. Robert, so we see actually one of them lose, specifically Sanguinex, mm-hmm. loses to Robert and Grifolian. Then we get to see his three other counterparts lose to three unknown Beybladers who also seem to have mythical 
or European mythical Beyblade bit beasts. And all of which just trounced the crap out of the Dark Bladers. And so that's because of how trounced they got, the Dark Bladers decided, well, uh, if we can't win by overcoming your bit beast, then we'll just steal bit beasts until we can. Assuming, of course, that, you know, any bit beast that they, quote, steal, they can then utilize and be able to take on the these European bla- Beybladers. We're not even sure if they're a team when they speak in this episode, but we'll find out in later episodes they actually are a European-based team. They're just really, really powerful. And we get that flashback, and then immediately we are introduced to Oliver who just so happens to match one of the silhouettes of one of the people that the Dark Bladers took on. But the Blade Breakers don't know that yet. Uh, but the, the viewer does. And it just so happens that he's got a bit of a grudge with the Dark Bladers and is glad that the Blade Breakers uh, gave them a piece of their minds. And that's kind of where things end in this episode, is that we get introduced to Oliver. He's very happy that the Dark Bladers have been taken care of but then kind of walks away after that and kind of gives his own uh, analysis on the Blade Breakers in his head. Uh, So at that point, last tangle in Paris, Andrea, what did it do right? What did it do wrong? (coughs) It was an okay episode. It was an okay episode. It, it, It doesn't, once again, it kind of showcases the, various uh dark bladers and being able to we actually do get to see the frankenstein one i believe in this one which we didn't see in the previous one he was the only bit beast that didn't get shown uh so we we get to see that i will say a plus is being able to show kind of the dark origins of the dark bladers even though it's not really a dark origin it's just it kind of showcases the power gap now between the blade breakers and these these new opponents and also very quickly associates them with Robert who we already know is a very powerful opponent so at that point we we get that that's a plus um negatives for this episode I will personally say the fact that Kenny had to overcome his fears was kind of a weak plot thread here (laughs) it was because yeah well the problem is he's the strategist Mm -hmm. so at that point it's not I'm not saying that it isn't worthwhile to cover him. I mean, for crying out loud, I complimented the uh, the previous episode where he went to a milk bar and showcased all the like we we did the clip show and I was okay with that. Mm -hmm. But. I'm not okay with us taking time to point out that a kid was scared of a horror movie. Like that's that's kind of dumb. It's just kind of strange you would see him be the type of person to be afraid of a horror film. Well, and on top, but but again, he's like a 10-year-old kid. Any any 10-year-old kid is going to be afraid of a horror film, especially if it's their first time seeing it. And it's like vampires and werewolves. Of course, that's going to be kind of scary. So I'm not going to, I'm not going to hold that against him. But I especially didn't like that Kenny apparently had to prove himself. He had to prove that, you know, the, that the, you know, his fear of a horror movie didn't, uh, destroy the Blade Breakers, which I never felt like that was hurting any cohesion or anything like that. I mean, do you love it when, you, like, if you're afraid of something and, like, the teammates are, like, they get the I mean, they teased him for it, and yeah. I'm okay with that. Like, you know, boys are going to be boys. True. So I'm, I'm okay with that. But that's really my only negative here is that, you know, that they tried to put some emphasis on Kenny, and it didn't really work out, and, and I don't think it was necessarily a bad thing it's just like i don't i don't care about what's going on with kenny especially when kenny's just being a a normal boy you know kind of thing um any other negatives we want to point out i i don't think necessarily that oliver is a negative in this one like we we know we know his name the blade breakers i don't think did they get his name or was he still mysterious that depends on how I want to say he was mysterious because they, they still couldn't figure out like in the next episode. I think that's when they find out his name because they, they run across him again. But um, Oliver doesn't really take away from this episode. If anything, it just kind of increases the mystery around Robert's team members and the fact that Oliver is one of them and lives in Paris. That's true. So I'm, I'm OK with that. Uh, out of five, what would we give Last Tangle in Paris? 
I just said three. Three, yeah. It, it's it's middle of the road. So moving into episode 34, we have Art Attack. And this is where we get kind of more the full introduction of Oliver. Uh, but the the thing I love is that, so they're going to spend an extra day in Paris after their run-in with the uh, Dark Bladers. But they're also going to see if they can try and get any information on powerful Beybladers in the Paris area. And while they are doing that, even though uh, Kai decides to go go search for information because, you know, Kai is Kai and he apparently can't be seen with the rest of the Blade Breakers, Ray also leaves early because he has to go catch up with his uncle who runs a restaurant in Paris. He, ha- he has a relative in every... This is the joke we were making when we were watching it is like Ray's got a Ray Ray's got a, a an uncle or a cousin or something like that in every country that's running some kind of a Chinese restaurant except this one we actually found out later it was a French restaurant because it turns out that the the owner of said restaurant is Oliver's dad. So we we found that out that was interesting. But as Max Tyson and Kenny start going around and and checking things out. They decide to go check out all the cool sites. And one of which is the Louvre. Uh, For those who don't know, the Louvre is like the, one of the, the most prestigious art museums in the world. And it turns out that when they go to the Louvre, it is closed. Public access, a public access to a museum is closed. Why is it closed? Because uh, a, the son of a, of a, French millionaire has reserved the entire Louvre for the day. Wasn't Ty- wasn't Tyson like complaining? Like we're we're like, getting why, we're getting why he- so Tyson's pissed because Kenny wants to go there. Yeah, and and Kenny wants to check out all the cool art. And this is when we find out that it is in fact Oliver who has reserved the whole Louvre for himself because he he goes there for inspiration. And this is where we get a lot of of background on Oliver, because it turns out that not only is he the the son of a French millionaire, this French millionaire is rich because he owns a number of prestigious French restaurants, one of which is own uh, one of which Ray's uncle works for. And it turns out that the head chef of all of them is Oliver. Because apparently he, th- this is a thing that we're going to find out with all of the other European uh, teammates, I'm guessing, is that A, they're, they're sons of prominent uh, millionaires within their country. So I'm guessing Robert's the same way. Like he's a, he's the son of a British millionaire. Uh, it's also that he's a prominent, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? A prodigy in terms of French cooking. Uh, because he's the head chef of all of these fresh French restaurants. So whenever he goes there, he gets to start cooking. And the way that we know this is that Oliver uh, decides after meeting up with Tyson and crew that he's hungry. And so he's going to go uh, to the French restaurant and he reserves an entire table for them and makes food for them and even offers to kick everybody else out if <laughs> it's bothering them that much. Uh, which, of course, that, that doesn't go very well with Tyson. Also, it turns out Oliver is the French Beyblading champion. And this is, uh, once we find this out, Tyson obviously wants to challenge him to a fight or to a, uh, to a Beyblade competition, which ultimately ends up in them going to a prestigious park that Oliver will only Beyblade in. Like, he will only Beyblade there because it's so beautiful. So they have their match, and we actually get to see Oliver's uh, Bit Beast Unicolian. So where uh, Roberts was based as a griffin, this is based as a unicorn. We're starting to notice the 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 similarities here. A theme of uh, a theme of of what they're doing because Griffolian Unicolian, and the match actually ends up in a tie, and Tyson does actually go out swinging in this entire thing, and that's how it ends up as a tie. Uh, because he's not willing to give up just because Oliver is this genius uh, that everybody's kind of pointing him out to be. Like, once they start Beyblading, like, everybody gathers because everyone he wants to see Oliver Beyblade kind of thing. Same thing with the French restaurant. People knew that he was going to be cooking that day, so they all came in and they wanted to to get Oliver's food. So at that point, the same thing happens, and thankfully, 
Uh, it ends up in a tie. Uh, tie it, it, I, one of the things I will say, Tyson goes down swinging in this whole fight. And that actually recommends all, or prompts Oliver to recommend that they go to Italy next because the next person that they should be facing is the guy who's stronger than Oliver, which is his friend Enrique. And so that's pretty much how the episode ends with them being teased for Enrique and Tyson uh, giving, given the struggle that he actually gave. <clears throat> the other thing that I find interesting uh, that Oliver mentions is that uh, one of the reasons that Robert and him have such prestige is that they have gained absolute, con quote, absolute control over their bit beasts. And the way that they make it sound, it, because once again, we're, we're taking into account how Robert Beybladed and then also how Oliver Beybladed, where they basically have acted like these monster tamers and that's how they've gained complete control over their bit beasts kind of thing. But uh, that's that's the episode in a nutshell. Art Attack, what did it do right? I think it paid it Oliver the way that it needed to. Mm -hmm. Is, um, he's a pompous prick yeah and that's fine that's that's the way that they needed to do it because these are these are supposed to be prestigious european beybladers that and more importantly when when we learn more about them the obvious question that tyson brings up is like why aren't you going to the russian tournament and they all just kind of mentioned that like oh well we've won the russian tournament and so it, apparently that's supposed to mean that like we're world champions roughly so basically we've gone from, you know, straight up competitors for the Blade Breakers. Now we have world champions. There's a little bit of a divide here. Oh, yes. There's a little bit of a power gap. Um, so I, I'm not going to fault them for, for their portrayal of Oliver. He actually makes sense <coughs> in that regard. Uh, what would you say is a positive for Art Attack? It's just, I liked the Bit Beast. Uni you liked Unicolian? Yeah, yeah, it was. Did you like the fact that he could, he would only Beyblade in one place? Which is funny, but... Genius is, is as genius does. Mm -hmm. And that's that's what this episode did. It painted Oliver as a genius. That's that's all it did. Um, okay, so, pos so we've gone over positives. What did this episode do wrong? Probably Oliver's attitude. Yeah, just... But I would actually argue that like maybe this is his attitude and the previous episode version of Oliver wasn't entirely accurate. Well, I just find it very uh, like annoying that, you know, he'll act like he's all nice and friendly and show hospitality and all, and all of a sudden he like he does a 180. But like... Andrea, don't you understand? He's a genius. That's like the justification for all of this. And I have a feeling this is going to be the justification as we go through Europe um, is like, oh, no, these guys can be total assholes. They're geniuses. Oh, yeah. Just wait. It, till it, the didn't, it didn't absolve St Tony Stark in the MCU, guys. Oh, yeah. And just wait till you see his attitude in the next episode. Oh, no, it, it's going to get worse. But um, as far as like legit negatives, I can't really say there is any. I mean, even the Kai segments where he went out to. Uh, go gather information on Oliver. That was fine. I didn't, I didn't really have any issues with it because it's still Kai being Kai. Uh, so he has to be oppressive and, and he has to be able to win at all costs kind of deal. And I'm not really going to fault Oliver's attitude because Oliver, you know, like they're, they're going out of their way to point out that Oliver is a world champion level Beyblader. Okay. Well, and, it, and it, of course he's got an ego. And and it's just really funny that you see like all the later all the the people who were watching the Beyblade uh, match they're all like oh no Unicornius is, was the one who won yeah no th there was still a straight straight up debate but Oliver was willing enough to admit that yeah uh but they yeah, you barely you, you barely won you know like and and here's the thing it does end in a tie and you might make the argument the tie goes to the leader anyway and say, or time tie goes to the home advantage and so at that point that would be oliver but i i don't think that's the point i think the point is is that tyson gave a lot more effort than oliver expected and that's why in turn he was willing to admit that enrique is the next step well the well the thing is it's like 
since uh, technically uh, Oliver's Beyblade was still kind of spinning and Tyson's wasn't, but is it just because they say it's a tie because they are both out of the dish? They were both out of the ring. They are both out of the dish. So it wouldn't consider who was actually still... They would consider it if they were still in the dish. That's true. That's the thing. Out of bounds. Mm -hmm. So it doesn't really matter at that point. That's That's why it's a tie. Because they both left the the dish at the same time. That's true. After their clash. So uh, out of five, what would we give Art Attack? Um, I'm willing to give it four because of the the Beyblade match itself. If I took Oliver's attitude into account, it'd probably be like a 2.5. Uh, just because, you, you know, he's got an ego on him, but I'm going to go four. I th- I think they did what they needed to do. Yeah, I'd give it a four as well. Okay, so then we move into episode 35, When in Rome, Beyblade. So now we've magically made it to Rome, and this is where the, bla- the Blade Breakers are going to challenge the local champion, Enrique, who Oliver mentioned, and so they they reach out to everybody. They they check to see, like, where does this Enrique Enrique guy hang out? Where does he live? And they go to Enrique's residence, to which a mysterious kid starts trying to sneak out of the mansion. Gee, I wonder if that's Enrique. <laughs> um, so at that point, like he he tries to blow off the blade breakers because they're trying to figure out like where Enrique is. And that's when the butler comes out and mentions that it is Enrique. Turns out Enrique is the son of a noble Italian family. And so at that point, that's why they have the big mansion. That's why he's got the tutors and all that stuff. I would, it would not surprise me if he was an Italian millionaire. Why? Because, well, you'll find out in a minute. Now, it turns out that Enrique has a bit of a weakness. And that is... Girls. The boobs. The boobs. Hmm. Yes, it is girls. And so he catches two lady friends when he runs off from the Blade Breakers. The Blade Breakers catch up to him. And challenge, and of course, Ch- Tyson challenges him. He's like, "Hell no, I'm not gonna do that. I'm I'm gonna go hang out on my personal yacht with these two girls, who are. Mm, I mean, can we really say anything about them? They were pretty. Well, they were they were pretty airheaded. Well, yeah. At first, they were like not interested, and he's yeah. like, "Well, I can." <clears throat> How would you like to go on my yacht and blah, 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 yep. and do this and do this? And, and then Tyson and then. apparently has watched the Back to the Future movies because he knows exactly how to get under Enrique's skin. Why? He called him chicken. <laughs> and uh, that's what got him to actually take the challenge. Uh, so I, I, I just love that. Like, dude is, is the local Italian champion, and all it takes is to call him chicken uh, to get him to do that. And so then uh, Enrique points out that they need to go to the, uh, there's like a miniature coliseum that his family has built for his Beyblading. It is literally a miniature coliseum that they can do Beyblade battles in. And so they say, okay, meet us the next day so that I can go have fun with the ladies and then we'll, we'll settle this in the coliseum the next day. They arrive and Enrique comes out in full-on Roman centurion garb. And it turns out that his sword and shield are actually his launcher. Again, an heirloom from his family. If his family aren't millionaires, I'm going to pull my eyes out. (laughs) He's got to be like... And they also even kind of make it sound like he's a bit of a prodigy himself. But uh, this is when uh, they start up their match, and it is, I believe, yeah, it's Dragoon versus Enrique's Amphilian, which is the first ever two-headed bit beast that we've ever faced. And, oh, and also I should point out that in the middle of all this, Oliver has followed them to Italy, specifically to go talk to Enrique. Because Enrique, uh, we find out, Or actually, no, this is in the next episode. My bad, my bad. But Oliver is still there, and he actually does show, uh, he does see this match. So because of the two-headed attack, it's a little too much for uh, Tyson to take on. And eventually, I believe, yeah, it it isn't a straight-up victory because I can't remember what was considered the cowardly tactic in this but basically they they try to claim that 
uh, Enrique is a coward. And that's, that's kind of what spurs on the next match. But I can't remember exactly what it was. What, was it because of the two heads? I just thought I just thought the first victory. I thought the first um, fight, it, he just overpowered him, and he was and Tyson was not used to challenging a bit beast that had two heads or something like that. It was something to that effect, but but I think, but something is mentioned about the two heads that basically makes it sound like uh, Enrique is cowardly in his win. Where I don't think we got that impression. Like, you know, you don't... Dude has a two-headed dragon as, as a bit beast. Like, what are the odds? You couldn't, you couldn't call that if you wanted to. So at that point, how is Amphilian cheating? I can't remember how they got there, but they, they tried to justify that, oh, no, um, what ultimately happens is that um, during their battle... At one point or another, uh, Dragoon actually saves uh, Tyson from Amphilian. Okay, here's what actually happens. Because of Amphilian, and this is where I'm, I'm going to have a little bit of a beef with how they've portrayed these European champions. Amphilian tries to attack Tyson directly. To which Dragoon blocks the attack, and that's what's considered cowardly. Is that the Bit Beast actually tried to attack the player instead of Dragoon. And so that's where this episode basically ends with Tyson losing and it being kind of questionable on why he lost because of the fact that Amphilian tried to attack Tyson. So when in Rome, Beyblade, what did it do right? Enrique. Enrique at least seems a little bit more of a of of a uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Um not enlightened. Um eccentric. Mm -hmm. He he at least comes off more eccentric than in my opinion than Oliver did. But Oliver was a different kind of level of eccentric. Um so I, I do like Enrique. I like the fact that he had very little focus towards Beyblading, and it's primarily because of his love for the ladies. Oh, yes. Enough so that the ladies are actually very irritated throughout the Beyblade match, uh, because, you know, he has to have adoring fans, I guess. Uh, what, did it, what did this do right, Andrea? I just find it funny that he's, like, trying to dodge out of trying to get, get involved with the blade breakers until they finally until they finally call him chicken yeah they they question his honor is is basically what they did how, how did we feel about his outfit the the fa the family heirloom roman centurion outfit where the sword and the shield are are the launcher well they made it sound older than it actually was i'll bet it, it wasn't that old well that's true but gotta love the I'm not going to fault the outfit. I think the outfit's the great. The attire just to kind of match the... Yeah. No, I, I liked it. Especially, especially since it fit with, fit with that Coliseum aesthetic. It probably seems a lot more better than probably the All-Stars. Uh... Oh, those were dumb. <laughs> um, yeah, I'll, I'll give way more credit to this. Um, but then at that point, that just makes, it makes you answer the question. Okay, so Oliver, he's kind of got that artist look. So yeah, stereotypical Frenchman. What the fuck is Robert supposed to be? Because Robert just kind of came out in an outfit. He didn't really have any anything set up for it. Well, maybe later he might have something a little bit more. Um, what do we think of Amphilian as a as the as his bit beast? Well, that was a cool. It it did look cool. Um, I I like the fact that it was a twin headed dragon, and uh, yeah, it, but it, and it well, its tail had the head, so. Yes, but that's still considered a twin-headed dragon. True, yeah. So, at that point, if anything, it would be more like a, a Greek kind of deal, but I'm okay with it because mm -hmm. Greek, Roman, it's fine. Um, What did this episode do wrong? The girls. I Like, the, the girls were airheaded. They they really weren't. They didn't add anything to it. I'm just kind of um, surprised. I'm just kind of surprised the girls. I, I will also say Tyson's attitude because... One of the reasons that Tyson calls him chicken and that gets the match 
is because Enrique's behavior is bothering him so much. Okay. Now, granted, you could say that Oliver's behavior bothered him, but it almost feels like Enrique went that extra mile, and that, that seems a little weird. Because you'd think that after Oliver, he'd be kind of used to this by now. But he just kind of acts like, no, he isn't. So that's probably my negative. Do you have a negative there? Well, I'm just surprised the girls stayed that, to watch the match because they didn't right. seem interested at, at a Beyblading period. So I'm but, Yeah, they weren't. They, they wanted to go shopping on Enrique's dime kind of thing. So that, yeah, it didn't make a whole lot of sense. But uh, out of five, what would we give when in Rome Beyblade? Four. Four. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm there. I think it's a good introduction of, of Enrique. Uh, then we get into episode 36, Deja Vu all over again. And this is where we have the conflict because of how the match ended that Enrique feels like the actions were cowardly. Um, and, and in fact, Tyson does not make that any better because of the fact that Amphilian tries to attack him. So... <clears throat> At that point, um, Enrique is not happy with how that match went down. And while he is out hanging out with the girls, he's kind of distracted. And because of how distracted he is, Oliver decides to come up and show that he is in Italy. To which, at that point, apparently Oliver is the only thing that can get Enrique away from women because he basically, he dodges the women and they go and have coffee or something to which they, they both mention that they've had, you know, encounters with the blade breakers and how Enrique's match isn't really sitting well with him. And this is where Oliver decides to hit it even harder. That one of the reasons that Robert Enrique and him are all super do duper Beybladers is because they have absolute control over their bit beasts. I have a problem with this. You guys will see there when we get there. Um, to which Enrique, or while they're out uh, at having coffee, they run uh, coffee. They, coffee. They, coffee. coffee. Uh, while they're having their coffee, they run into the Blade Breakers again. To which Tyson, and it, because Enrique is still battling with his previous encounter, uh, he then Tyson basically challenges him again. And he's like, you're on meet me the next day. And so we have Tyson versus Enrique again uh, with Amphilian and Dragoon going up against each other, except this time Enrique is going to finish him once and for all and, and get this out of his system. And by darn it, he tries, but this is where we start to see the flaw in Oliver's argument. Because, again, these are supposed to be super de-duper world champion Beybladers because they have control of the, over their bit beasts. Not in this match. Enrique barks enough orders to Amphilian that Amphilian turns on Enrique. I didn't even think that was possible because, the you know, the Beyblade's supposed to work for you. And Amphilian actually turns on Enrique and tries to finish Enrique instead, which means that Tyson and Dragoon eventually have to go in and save Enrique from Amphilian. Absolute control over their bit beasts, huh? That argument doesn't really stand up after this. To which, at that point, um, the... The battle is, or the battle is officially given to Tyson, uh, and I guess Enrique has to go and learn how to truly respect his own bit beast after this, and that's roughly the episode. Uh, so, what did this episode do right, Andrea? Well, I did like it how Tyson kind of played the strategy of trying to get the two heads to kind of that. Each yeah, other. that's right. That's how this whole thing starts. Is that. He tries to play the two heads against each other. So that way... And that's when Enrique starts, you know, I am your master, and that's how Amphilian turns on Dragoon, or turns on Enrique. Um, yeah, I do like that. That actually did make sense, because if it's a two-headed dragon and that's the problem, you play the two heads against each other. Except now it, it brings out the negative that I have of the episode, which is Amphilian. <laughs> uh... 
It's a bit beast. It's supposed to follow its master's instructions. Except this time. But I thought that the European champions had absolute mastery over their bit beasts. Well, and you gotta love it that, you know, like, Oliver likes to criticize the blade breakers that, like, you guys have no control over your bit Well, beast. even Oliver mentions that, yeah, this is this is out of the blue. And this is especially interesting because Oliver in the previous episodes mentioned Enrique's better than him. He basically makes it sound like Oliver is the weakest of the team. At this point, I'd make the argument that Enrique is the, the weakest of the team mm -hmm. because he doesn't have that control. Whereas obviously Oliver did with Unicolian and Unicolian, uh, Oliver with Unicolian, he did the exact same thing. So at that point, yeah, I, I'd say Enrique is weaker than Oliver uh, at that point. Um, so that's that's my opinion on it. I will say the match itself is actually a, a positive in, in this one's favor. And I also do like the fact that Enrique doesn't like how he won the previous one and that fuels into this one. I think that actually was a good idea uh, because then it gives us a reason to have that match again given the results that we got so well and plus i'm kind of surprised you know as they're traveling from place to place to learn about you know the european bl bladers and all that stuff i'm kind of surprised that max and and ray whether kai would be involved or not <coughs> don't even have any opportunities to challenge some of these harder trainers because that that's actually one of the things i brought up with you when we were watching and it, tyson, is like, and it seems like tyson's like oh challenging majority of, a lot mm -hmm. of the and tyson got grifolian too so at that point yeah it would have been a cooler thing if ray challenged oliver you know because he he meets him the way he meets him or have Max challenge Oliver, and then Ray challenges Enrique. Like, you but know, no, it's all it's all been Tyson so far. Well, yeah, because it's like, well, maybe each one of these uh, so so called powerful um, bladers that are supposedly a team, you know, one would why wouldn't one get each uh, like get one blader, you know? Right, and they don't do that. They mm -hmm. instead give it all to Tyson, but they all agreed that they all needed to improve. Well, mm -hmm. except Kai. Mm -hmm. Kai. Kai's not going to... Kai's the elite Beyblader, and nobody's going to tell him otherwise. Mm -hmm. um, so it actually would have been cooler if like, the rematch with Robert was actually with Kai, um, and he had to prove himself. But yeah, no, that that's definitely another negative. Is like, Max is not involved here, neither is well, Ray. Because you kind of wonder, like, since they all claim that they're not going to go to the Russian tournament, so... Right. This would be a great opportunity for them to all kind of learn what their weaknesses are when it <coughs> comes to stronger Beybladers. Mm -hmm. And also, I, I would say that this is also a negative. It would have been cool if Oliver had been able to teach something to one of them. So, like, been able to teach something to Max, and then they move on into the next one, and Enrique teaches something to Ray. But no, it's just that you beat them, and that's how we know you're the best, right? Mm -hmm. It's not really how that works. Um, we want to be able to see new skills, new attacks, everything like that. And unfortunately, we're seeing Tyson and Dragoon the whole time. Mm -hmm. Which makes you wonder, like, how are Max and Ray supposed to get up to par uh, in the Russian tournament? I guess we'll find out, because you <laughs> know, we're it, not done it, yet. It's just like one of those things that's like, it seems like, well... It almost sounds like if, like, say, Tyson and Dragon are, like, the weakest in the whole team, and that's why he's getting all the challenges. But then when you go to the Russian tournament, it's like, well, he'll probably get so good and has improved. And you're like, well, how are the others, you know? No idea. Um, and yeah, so that, that's definitely a negative out of, out of a lot of this. Out of five, what would we give uh, Deja Vu all over again? I'm I'm going to knock it down to a three. I like the match is good, but the fact that we're now playing against the narrative that's being said by Oliver um, saying that they have complete mastery over their bit piece, it, it definitely plays against it. Um, so I'll, I'll put it down to a three. What about you? I'll probably give it a 3.5. Yeah. It's... Just because Tyson was generous enough to go save Enrique. Even though he was being a complete 
He has to be the Goku. About it. He has to be the Goku of the of the series. So that's totally fine. And that'll go ahead and do it for us. So when we come back, it's going to be episodes 37 through 40. We're we're running out of episodes here, Andrea. We're coming up on the last 10. So this will be very interesting to see how this series ends. In the meantime, though, thank you guys so much for listening in. We appreciate you guys' support. And uh, if you're listening on YouTube, make sure to leave a comment down below. Let us know what you thought of these four episodes and the uh, the debut of Enrique and Oliver and whether or not you agree or disagree with us. We'd love to see that. You can also leave a like on the video and consider subscribing. It definitely helps out with the algorithms and such. Or if you're listening on pod- podcast platforms, you can do so on Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Amazon Podcasts, Spotify, and Player.fm. And we will see you guys next time for the next episode of Geek News Marathon Night. Until then, it's time, Andrea. Go ahead and say it. You know you want to. I'm pretty sure, but I'm pretty sure. Oh, that's a long What up, bro?